If you have beaten only the first boss and you need the most powerful build in the Lost of the Fallen, this build deals over 2000 attack damage and makes you almost invincible and immortal. Every damage you receive becomes a greater damage and your health is always restored. You also get Umbra finishes which guarantees you to get rare items and rare runes in the game. You get all these items at the beginning of the game so it doesn't matter if you are a beginner cause all items are easy to get. I'll walk you through how to get the items and explain every spell to your full understanding. Stay tuned and hit on the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed to the channel. Alright, so the very first item that you need in order to make this build is the Umbral Eye of Loaz. And before you get the Umbral Eye of Loaz, you need the Pilgrim's Patch Key, which I already have in my inventory. Let me show you where it is in my inventory. This is what the key looks like. This is the Pilgrim's Patch Key. This is the key that you need in order to get the first item which is the Umbral Eye of Loaz. However, if you don't have this key, you can always buy it from Stormont. Stormont is already in Skyrest. He's the one standing right here. You can purchase the key from Stormont. However, it costs a whole pin 9,500 Vigo. If you don't have that enough Vigo, I have made a video on how to get enough Vigo in the game. I'll put a link in the description box below. Just check the video out to show you how to get enough Vigo to buy the 9500 Vigor Pilgrim's Patch Key from Tomon, okay? So yeah, um, if you have it, then go ahead, go to purchase Radiance, and judgment. you would see it somewhere here because I already have it, I'm not going to see it here, but it, just as I showed you in my inventory, that is the Pilgrim's Patch Key that you need in order to get the Umbral Eye of Loash, okay? Our so lady will once you have the Pilgrim's Patch Key, all you have to do is to come back to the vestige of Etheric and then go to up to vestige okay we would have to go to up to vestige and then go straight to bell room i have just um cleansed one beacon okay that is why i'm having just this one here. So, this is early in the game so yeah um you would have bell room there if you've just cleansed just one beacon okay so we head straight to bell room Alright, so now once you are in the bell room, all you gotta have to do is just look to your left side. You will see a hidden door here. The door is not hidden, but once we don't pay attention to it, um, you won't see it. But yes, it's just right here, as you can see here. Just have to open this door and you are cool to go, okay? Now, before you open this door, just know that the enemies here can be very, very annoying. So all you gotta have to do is just go straight past enemies. Don't try to fight any of them. Just go straight past enemies. They can be very annoying and they are very powerful too. So just go straight past them and don't do anything. Just do exactly as I do. Follow exactly as I do and you will be cool, okay? So once you have this, let's just go ahead and open the door. And it says you use the program's patch key, all right? Yeah, so once that is due, we can just have to go inside the door, all right? Okay, so we go inside here, and what you're gonna have to do is to first of all, move into Umbro. So, you go into Umbro first, and try and get your health bar back up. And then just head straight forward. Don't fight anybody, just do exactly as I do. And you are good to go, okay? Head straight past here. And be very careful about these arrow guys. They can be very annoying in the game. So just get past them. And get past here too. And don't fight anybody. Just keep on moving forward. There are umbra seeds here. Where you can um, plant seeds. Okay. If you think you have difficulties in the game. You can always plant a seed here. And just continue heading forward past this side and keep moving forward okay so do exactly as i do and beware of this arrow guy too yep and there is another place here where you can plant a seed in order to save okay so once you have these ones there go ahead and climb up here and if this is your first time doing this there are going to be some Things that you're gonna have to look out for. Get past this dog and this enemy. 
and just keep moving forward. They can be very annoying sometimes, but just keep moving forward and you're good to go. There's another flower bed. I think that's all of the flower beds, but just keep moving forward past this guy. And as, as you saw that there is a barrel that is going to, to move. And if you don't take care, it's going to hurt you. All you're going to have to do is to move past the barrel and then just go straight forward. Do exactly as I do, guys. This is the only way you get past these guys. Just get past these dogs too. And just keep moving forward, okay? Now move to the left side. And you're going to have to activate a vestige here. Don't mind them. Just keep moving forward. And activate the vestige of the actor. Okay, so once you activate the vestige of the actor, all you have to do is to rest to get your health bar back up and you are good to continue the journey. That was the most difficult part of this video and you've already done it. So once that is done, let's get back and continue the journey. Just head straight here past these enemies. Just keep on running. Don't fight them. Just get past them and then you keep on going. And then beware of the arrows, guys. You move to this left side. You don't have to cut your way through. And then you keep moving forward. Don't mind the enemies that you see. Just keep moving forward. Don't fight anyone. Move down this hill. And you meet the enchantress. Don't fight him. Just move past there. And then have your way through here. At this place, you're going to have to go into Umbra mode. So get, just stand right here and move into Umbra. And all you have to do is to softly the belly here. Once you softly it, what you see down here is the Umbra Eye of Loash. You can die here, just allow them to kill you. And when you come back, what you saw played, the Umbra Eye of Loash, as you can see down there, will still be there waiting for you, okay? However, if you have enough strength, you can just pick it up and then just be on your way. But you can just ignore them, let them kill you, and then whatever you saw played will still be there, alright? So we're gonna have to regenerate at the vestige of the actor. You have to follow the same way. Follow the same way. That will get you to where we go to earlier. And then move down here. As you can see, you get through these guys. Get past the enemies. Here you have to meet the enchantress, don't fight it, just move to the right side and then get past these guys. And then as you move down, you're gonna have to come see what you saw fully. This is the Umbra Eye of the Watch. Alright, so once you pick that up, let's check from our inventory to see where it is. And there it is, this is the Umbra Eye of the Watch. It says, while charging a heavy attack, all damage is received as weather damage and your posture cannot be broken. So what this one does is that whenever you charge in a heavy attack, your posture cannot be broken and every damage that you receive will be received as a weather damage which can always get a backup once you hit your heavy damage attack, right? So upon illustration right here, you can see that whichever damage that we receive in heavy attack mode becomes a weather damage and upon hitting our enemy back, we get our health bar making us invincible and immortal in the process. So once that is done, all you're gonna have to do is get, get back to sky rest. Let's get to, to sky rest. And once you are in sky rest, let's get to Molhu. In order to get to Molhu, you're gonna have to go to Umbra mode. And then you get to Maul who is right here somewhere. Let me see. He's on the other side. There's a narrow door there. Yep, this is where Maul who is. So you come to Maul who, and then you go to socket Umbral Eye. Here is where you get the chance to socket the Umbral Eye that we just gotten. Okay. So you press on it, and then you choose the Umbral Eye of the Watch. Once you click on it, yes, it's going to socket this eye into your Umbral and then you are good to go so with this one every damage that you receive will be received as a weather damage all right all right so the next item that we need in order to make this build is the ravager gregory sword and in order to get a ravager gregory sword 
let's go to up to vestige and what we need is ale house ale house is in lower Colorado and is the vestige of lydia the numb witch okay this is still early in the game however you're gonna have to go much deeper in order to get to lower Colorado, but it's still early in the game okay so let's warp to vestige okay so once you get to vestige of lydia the numb witch all you have to do is follow my footsteps as here can be very frustrating and annoying sometimes and very tricky too okay so once you are here all you're gonna have to do is to jump down here and follow the path up to where your left side is here and then you just have to go down and once you go down all you're gonna have to do is get to the last floor or to, to the ground floor here once you get here you'll see a path here opened up be very careful here can be very tricky as the fire that you can see down here are all traps okay so once you get past all the traps all you have to do is have to go forward and forget all the archers that you see be very careful with them as they can be very annoying and as you get past them you come straight to where this bonfire is just forget all the enemies you see and climb all the way up here to the stairs and take a left turn pass through this and you're gonna have to meet a dog here just ignore the dogs and come up to the ceiling and just go straight forward as you can see in the video okay so once you get here there is a stairs here you take the stair and then you climb down the ladder and then you head towards this place just ignore all the enemies and move forward get past this place move to the left side and then you have to meet this wooden whatever it is climb it up and take a right turn here you will meet a skeleton ignore the skeleton don't fight him and just get past the skeleton and move to your left side and get past what you see here use your umbra to get past this gate and then here um you're gonna have to you can take whatever you see down here either you take it or you move to the right side and the left side again and here what you have done is you have activated uh you push the ladder down and you have activated a shortcut okay so you climb down and you see that even if you try again and you die there is a shortcut that you've just activated back to vestige of lydia the numb witch okay so once you do that um you can get your health bar back up if you took any damage climb back up and then you continue to where the ravager solve is okay so take the left side and then you climb all the way up here do as early as i do and here be very careful there are some enemies hiding behind exactly so you beat them and then be very careful because this guy can be very annoying to you sometimes you beat them and then you are good to go and once you beat them there is an item you see that there is a guy has been impaled here that is what we are trying to get just move closer to him pick the item and then you see the ravager gregory's rosary what you have here is ravager gregory's rosary not the sword we need to get this rosary to the exactor in order to buy the sword from the exactor so once you have it all you're gonna have to do is get back up here let me see you get back up here and move towards this place you can pick up what you see here and once you pick it up you see once you pick it up you are just good and ready to go get back to the vestige and head back to skyrest okay so we are back to skyrest we're gonna have to go find the exacta and give the rosary to the exacta where we see I think he's here somewhere let me see the exacta is here yeah you move down this place and there he is okay so you come to the exacta you talk to him and then you say exacta dunma right so you come all the way to talk and then hand over ravager gregory's rosary to the exacta and he said While you use ravager gregory's never rosary. Formal presence in okay so you have to you see, our reach knows no bounds As a get passed through the would... line and then once you have done that go to purchase and you see that the ravager gregory sword will be here but in order for you to come up here, all you're gonna have to do is get back and talk to him again. And you go to purchase, and you figure. see the Ravager Gregory sword here. It costs 1875 um, Vigor, 
if you don't have the vigor i've made a video on how to get enough vigor just buy the sword and you are good to go okay so once you have it you are good to go and we move on to the next item in the game okay so once you have purchased the ravager gregory sword from the exacta let's check it out from our weapons and see what it says this is it it says ravager gregory sword and you can see it has a base level attack of 232 and it has a physical damage of 30 plus 90 and it deals a holy damage and a wither damage too right now this can be upgraded from the strength of c all the way to a with a 10 plus upgrade okay that means the base level that you see here can always be upgraded to this maximum effect where it can give you about five thousand or five hundred attack power which is crazy okay now you see that it doesn't have a fire damage right it doesn't have a fire damage however it has a holy and with that damage but since it doesn't have a fire damage this brings us to the next item that we need in the game and which is the sword of skin and tooth now the sword of skin and tooth i already have it i'll show you where i got it from in the game i'll show you where i got it from but i just want to point on it okay so the sword of skin and tooth has a fire damage of 89 and the attack power right now is at 454 and that's because i have upgraded it up to plus four this can also be upgraded up to plus nine we are going to do all that but before that it is at plus four right now that's why you can see the attack power which is at four five four and the moment we upgrade it to plus nine it's going to have a massive effect and damage of it too okay so once we have that um the fire damage would come in and be together with the ravager gregory sword so we are going to use these two swords hand in hand and it's going to be powerful okay so let me show you how i got the sword of skin, skin and tooth so we move all the way to the vestige and once again the sword of skin and tooth can also be found at alehouse where we had the vestige of lydia the number witch okay so we come all the way there okay so once we are here once again you follow exactly as i do in order to get a sword of skin and tooth okay so we jump down here and once again we navigate all the way to the left side and we just jump down here and then once again we jump into the trap pit where we're gonna have to evade all the traps there oh my gosh so these are traps we're gonna have to just get past them and this time we take a left turn and then we just beware of these archers and we're gonna have to get through this wall with our umbrella lamp and once you get through the wall you head all the way up here and you will see a chest right here you open the chest and you're going to get the sword of skin and tooth okay so that's how you get a sword of skin and tooth okay so now that we have the two swords that we need for our build all what we need to do right now is to go ahead and equip these two swords okay so first of all let's go to the first hand and then equip the ravager gregory sword and then move to the next hand and then equip the sword of skin and tooth okay so now that we have these two swords equipped the only disadvantage of this is that these two swords are long heavy swords and they are just so heavy that it has set our encumbrance status all the way to highly encumbered now what this means is that we are too heavy to move and as such sprinting is going to be difficult running is going to be difficult and even evading is almost going to be impossible to do so let's try it out and see what i mean now that we have equipped the two swords and we are highly encumbered you see that sprinting is difficult i can't even run right now and evading evading almost looks like i'm going to fall okay that is what it means to be encumbered by your encumbrance status so what it means is that we are gonna have to find ways and means to bring our encumbrance status all the way to medium okay and the only way to do that is to boycott the armor that we are wearing so let's go to the helmet first the helmet weighs 9.4 as you can see here let's unequip the helmet and then the moment we do that let's go to the body armor itself and then the body armor weighs around 36.8 right so let's go ahead and unequip the body armor and the moment we do that our encumbrance status is now set to heavy as you can see down here okay so that means we're gonna have to boycott more of the armor right so let's go to the gauntlet 
and then unequip the gauntlet and now it is set to medium right and for the trousers i think you're gonna have to go in for anything that weighs less okay so whatever that you have it doesn't matter what you have here just pick something that weighs less okay for instance i'll go in for overseer trousers it weighs 12.4 so i'm going for this one and then now you can see that our encumbrance status is set to medium as you can see here what this means is that we can now go ahead and then evade and then sprint and run and all that and use all what we want to use in tool source wielding okay now the next secret that you're gonna have to know in this build is that some of you don't know how to switch from one sword wield and double sword wielding right now i am in double sword wielding and the only key that lets you do this is the y or the triangle key on your gamepad okay so you press either y on xbox or triangle on playstation and it's going to give you the ability to use only one sword okay so even though you've equipped two swords once you press y you have the ability to use only one sword as you can see here okay but the moment you press y again or triangle this time you have the ability to use the two swords that you have equipped okay so for instance you attack and then it goes with both weapons okay so now that we have equipped the two long swords what we need to do next is to upgrade the weapons to their maximum effect okay in order to upgrade the long swords what we need is the blacksmith in skyrest the blacksmith is called galinda and if the blacksmith is not in skyrest if you don't have galinda in skyrest i have made a very special video on how to get a blacksmith to skyrest i put a link in the description box below just check it out and it's going to show you how to get a blacksmith to skyrays in order to do your upgrades okay so once you come to the blacksmith or galinda you just have to head straight to upgrade equipment and you can see socket runes too here and you might not see socket runes there i've made a very special video on everything about the runes in the game okay the runes don't play much role in this build but anyways if you want to check that video out i'll put a link in the description box below you check it out and then it's going to tell you everything about the runes and how to equip the runes okay but our main focus is on upgrade equipment okay so let's go to upgrade equipment and then as you can see i have already upgraded the ravager gregory sword to plus eight so you can see we have plus eight up here and the next upgrade is going to give me plus nine at the moment my attack power is 670 and the moment i upgrade to plus nine it gives me an attack power of 748 and a physical damage of 189 the holy damage of 94 plus 80 the reader damage of 94 plus 80 and all that you can see that right, right here and check the requirements make sure you check the requirements before you do any upgrades right now it needs strength of 30 and radiance of 30 so all these requirements are necessary you check these requirements before you do any of the upgrades okay so yeah go ahead and then upgrade everything to plus 9 or plus 10 so let me just go ahead and upgrade mine and then it says upgrade it's, it's going to take much of my derelium nuggets yeah so i just go to upgrade and then now i've upgraded to plus nine and there's even a plus ten that it can it can upgrade to there's a plus ten here but i wouldn't have that enough materials to do the upgrade to plus ten but you can go ahead upgrade to plus ten even plus eleven and it's going to increase all your attack power all the way to 838 and all that okay so with that being said we are good to go i've already upgraded some of the sword of skin and tooth it's already a plus six i can do more of the upgrades but i don't have enough of the materials to do that but what we've done is okay for the sake of this video i'm going to leave it at plus six and the uh, ravager gregory sword to plus nine okay and this is enough to go once we are done let's just go ahead and check it out with the socket runes this doesn't play much role in this build but if you already have the socket runes there let's go and check it out okay so with the socket runes i'll start with the ravager gregory sword and then we have um two upgrades here we have two sockets okay so the moment you upgrade you get sockets in the runes okay and you have a maximum of three sockets for now it's just to the more you upgrade the more you get the maximum socket available okay so we go to the first rune and then equip let me see rag increases posture damage okay so i'll equip rag and then i'll come down to the next one and uh, maybe equip it says gain mana upon killing an enemy yeah maybe i'll go for this one and then that will be it so once i'm done let me get to the sword of skin and tooth and then um equip the runes for this one 
we have Hassan, Atif. They all have what they do. Increases um, strength scaling. Yes, I'll go for this one. And this is only one that I have, Bellam. And that will be it for now. So that is all for upgrades, guys. That is all for upgrades now. And um, from here, we're going to have to check the gameplay out. So upon testing the source and the upgrades that we did, you can see that with one heavy attack, we deal over 2000 attack damage. And the most important thing is that on heavy attack, your posture is not broken and all damage you receive becomes a weather damage which restores your health when you hit back your enemy. One other advantage of this build is that you get an Umbra finisher with the weather damage and Umbra finishers are guaranteed ways to get rare runes and other rare items in the game. This build also works with just one sword if that is your playstyle, you still get over 1000 attack points and you mostly get Umbra finishers also. As we said, Umbra finishers are guaranteed ways to get rare items and rare runes in the game. You can always alter this build and go with the one you are most comfortable with, either wielding a double sword or just one sword. However, whichever method you choose deals considerable amounts of damage and when done correctly, always restores your health and gives you Umbra finishes.